Good morning and welcome to Inside Tennessee. We hope you had a terrific Thanksgiving, a day of family and celebration with those you love. We are pleased to have someone who loves this community just about as much as anyone, and that is Elaine Streno. She is the executive director of Second Harvest Food Bank of East Tennessee. So good to see you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. My colleague John North and I join you on what is one of our favorite broadcasts because this is a time that yearly we check in with three homegrown charities in our community to just get the temperature of where things stand in terms of giving and also need. So Elaine, let's start there. Where would you say we are with need? Well, it's up 20% from last year. Um, many reasons, of course, cost of food and all the things we read about in the news or listen. Mm -hmm. And um, food prices have really impacted um, so much of what we do. You are in the business of helping people who may just need um, a little extra food to get them through the month, but then also people who come back and back and back again. You've been doing this 30 years um, and you serve 18 counties. For people who aren't familiar with Second Harvest Food Bank, explain how many people you touch in a given year. So we are a distribution center. We have seven different feeding programs. Um, there's, we provide a lot of meals, about 1.2 million meals a month through our different feeding programs, through our partners. Um, we have about 600 partners in 18 counties. We work with RAM, we work with Mission of Hope, and we are essentially providing them food. But we now, of course, are getting involved in the day-to-day -day distribution in our mobile pantry program. So mm -hmm. it's, it's escalated a lot over the last 30 years. And I know that uh, for folks who don't realize what $10 can do, $10, even just a simple $10 can do a lot, but it's important that we want people to know how they can help those who are watching us right this minute. What are the things they can do to help you all in your efforts? Well, volunteering is very important. Secondharvestetn.org is the website you can sign up. Obviously, this is the season um, when we all appeal to the public to help us because our 80,000 warehouse makes us so efficient that a dollar provides three meals. And um, we buy in bulk, we, we do everything we can to um, make the food as inexpensive as possible for our partners. You mentioned uh, you need volunteers, and I know mm -hmm. there are people that are, are listening right now who are like, hmm, maybe I could do that. Can you give some examples of the kinds of things that volunteers do so that may strike some chords with people? Great question, yes. So we, you can come to our warehouse, 136 Harvest Lane in Maryville, pack cereal, pack food boxes. Since COVID, we're giving our food out in boxes. We're not giving it to the individuals directly. Um, and then at our events, our mobile pantry events, a lot of people have been coming out and volunteering when we are in um, a particular area. We've really increased the mobile pantry program. We've purchased two more trucks that are not cheap. And when we go to the community, instead of the partner agency, we, we kind of become the agency. So they enjoy the heck out of it too. And uh, just to follow up on John's question, if people do want to volunteer, how many hours commitment might that be for great, someone? Great question, John. So again, it could be two. It, it could be we have groups of Wednesday mornings, about 30 people, and they are gelled in community and fellowship, and then sometimes um, different churches. But two hours to four hours, Saturdays are available too. So we, we try to make it easy. And, and WBIR covered an event recently, mm -hmm. just a couple of weeks ago. What, what stood out about that event to you? The 600 cars that were wrapped around Foothills Mall. That, wow, yeah. 600 yes. down in Maryville. Yes. That's amazing. It was, it was like 1,700 families were impacted. Um, this is when, I, as you know, there's some cynicism in feeding the hungry because, of course, you always hear, if they just work for a living, blah, blah, blah. But a lot of issues are contributing. But this, the first car was there at midnight, and the distribution started at 10 a.m. Mm. So we literally... That's a lot. Mm -hmm. um, most people wouldn't do that unless they needed the food, you know. I, I just want to remind people um, that w what you all do is great in terms of feeding people. But again, just getting back to this idea of volunteering, a truly enriched life is one where you give back to other people. The people who have the greatest satisfaction in their lives are the ones who are able to turn around and help others. And this sounds like a terrific opportunity for that kind of a thing. 
Well, we were just talking about the state of this world, and it, that's the cure. And um, to, just staying focused on giving to others and not staying focused on you. Mm -hmm. So it's fun to watch those volunteers work. Yeah. And, and you talked about the more than 600 partner agencies you have. We're going to hear from Mission of Hope. We're going to hear from Remote Area Medical as well, two East Tennessee-based charities. What can you say about the level of giving and the level of volunteerism in this community compared to others across the country? Well, I think East Tennessee has the most generous heart non-biased, of course. Mm -hmm. And we see giving in, in every community because there's 200 food banks in the United States and five in Tennessee. But there's just a special, my opinion, special um, kind of love for each other that East Tennessee has, which it makes us, um, and just like you said, not from here, just so proud to be able to live here and serve this community. What are you thinking about 2024, sort of looking ahead? How does the year look to you? It, it doesn't look good. It looks bleak to me. Mm. Um, you were sharing about your industry, yeah. mine too. Because I just don't think, I don't see anything changing. Prices of housing you mentioned. I don't see a lot of changing um, that can make the, the substantial difference that has to be made that a family doesn't have to stand in line for food. I, I would love to say something great was going on, but I don't see much here. Well, Elaine Shreno, what gives you hope? Um, Again, people caring about each other. It just, that's what it is. Um, COVID shot people's lives just upside down and, and sideways and the giving increased. So people do care about each other. It just needs to be said more, my opinion. Well, we appreciate you sharing your opinion with us on this Sunday morning. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. We'll be back with more of our conversation about cherries homegrown here in East Tennessee on this Thanksgiving week right after this.